In my work as a boat builder and yacht broker, um, I, I often see people having debates about the size of the generator and how much air conditioning they should use and that sort of thing. And I would say in years past, the general uh, philosophy of people was, if I need 36,000 BTUs of air, which is a lot of aircon for a mid-sized boat, that I need to get an 8 to 10 kilowatt generator to run all that air conditioning. What I have found in my own experience is that even in places that are extraordinarily hot and humid, like Florida in the summer or the Bahamas or the Chesapeake Bay, is that if you looked at a boat and how many days you spent on that boat at anchor away from shoreside power, how many evenings a year would you need to run so much air conditioning that you could bring the boat down to a frigid chill? And from talking to most of my customers, the belief is, is that generally they over-generator their boat. They build a generator, they put a generator on their boat to run more aircon than they actually need to run at anchor. Now again, that's not true of everybody. But where do you really need the aircon is when you're trapped in a windless marina in Panama or you're trapped in a windless marina in Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands or you're trapped in a windless marina in Florida where you don't have a lot of airflow over the boat. Your boat isn't anchored and turning into the breeze. You don't have anything going through your boat. That's when it can get really, really hot and sultry. But remember, when you're dockside, you can plug your boat into shore power. Um, I would say if you're running a lot of aircon, you need at least 15 amps of shore power. But uh, what I would advise people to do these days when they're getting a new boat is to get sufficient air conditioning to completely chill the boat dockside and get a smaller generator to run just one or two of the air conditioning units for those rare days when you're at anchor that you need to be chilled.